Hello and welcome to Catholic Lives, our continuing podcast of short biographies of notable and admirable uh, Catholics throughout history who have uh, contributed to the Church and to human civilization, more generally speaking. In this episode, we're going to discuss one of the most amazing heroes that you have never heard of. A man whose name was Witold Pilecki. Witold Pilecki was a captain in the Polish army, and during World War II, after the fall of Poland, after the Nazis had taken over Poland, he volunteered to go into Auschwitz to help the Polish resistance gain knowledge of what was happening in the Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland, and spent nearly three years there. I wrote a detailed report of what he found, information of which eventually got back to the Polish government in exile and via them to the Allies in World War II. Who was Witold Pilecki? According to the historian Norman Davies, uh, he said, uh, he said of him, quote, if ever there was an Allied hero who deserved to be remembered and celebrated, this was a person with few peers, unquote. According to the chief rabbi of Poland, Rabbi Michael Shudrit, uh, he said of uh, Captain Pilecki, quote, when God created the human being, God had in mind that we should all be like Captain Witold Pilecki, Pilecki of blessed memory. Who was this man who actually volunteered to go into the death camps? Well, he was born in, uh, in what would be modern-day um, uh, Belarus which in, in 1901, which had been the uh, part of the Russian Empire at the time. Eventually he would marry a local school teacher and have two children. But he spent much of his time in the Polish army. He was a military man for the most part of his career. And he was someone who had uh, varied pursuits. Uh, he ran the family farm, but he also enjoyed things like painting and poetry. Poetry was you know, something near and dear to the hearts of uh, the Polish people, the Polish language. And um, eventually, uh, when the Nazis invade in 1939, Pilecki is called up to defend Poland against the Nazi invasion. Following that defeat, uh, Pilecki made his way to Warsaw to fight with the Polish underground resistance, which will come to be called the Home Army, uh, against Nazi occupation. In 1940, a group of Polish opponents uh, were imprisoned, uh, political opponents were imprisoned in Auschwitz. And soon after this, telegrams began to arrive informing inmates' families of their death. And this sparked suspicion amongst the Polish underground in, uh, in Warsaw. And so Pilecki volunteered to investigate. And so, in September 19th, 1940, the Nazis did a roundup of political prisoners in Warsaw. He simply wandered the street into the crowd and was taken up uh, into, um, into uh, imprisonment and sent to Auschwitz, where he was given the prisoner number 4859. And his mission was there to do a couple of things. One was to raise the morale of political prisoners by bringing news to them from outside the camp and to help them get through the horrible conditions. If you don't know, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with the history of Auschwitz, you may not know. Its original purpose was to sort of work Polish political prisoners to death. That was its original purpose. It was then eventually, in fact, he records this in his report, is eventually shifted over to was well, actually different from most of the, the Nazi death camps. You have both a work camp, but you also have the extermination centers for Jewish people. And he sees this happen and describes it in his report. But it begins with the liquidation of, of Polish political prisoners. And then later on, as you'll, his report uh, mentions, it'll also be when Germany invades Russia, you'll have Soviet political prisoners being murdered in large numbers as well. His second... Um, mission while he was in the camp was to um, provide information on camp conditions of the Home, Ar Home Army in Warsaw, part of which was to give some idea what the Germans were doing, part of which, according to uh, Pilecki, was to give them some idea how they might liberate the camp. Uh, and his first report is sent out in 19 October of 1940 and reaches 
the Polish government in exile in March of the next year and pass it on to the Allies. And so you have this um, amazing report, which if you ever get a chance to read it, you should. It's been published recently in a book. It's called The Auschwitz Volunteer, in which he describes um, the way the camp is run, how it's treated, and how basically that he creates uh, an underground organization in the death camp to um, keep prisoners away from the worst details, the ones that are most likely to work them to death, stuff like this, to um, find out routes for escape. He does eventually get escape himself and gets other people to allow them to escape as well. And he's um, there as well, as I mentioned before, to actually help basically some of the prisoners overcome just the psychological devastation of being in the camps themselves. Uh, and while he's there, by the way, just two things, Catholic things, uh, he records and mentions um, the, the martyrdom of St. Maximilian Kolbe. St. So Maximilian Kolbe, in 1941, if you recall, volunteers his own life. as a prison escape, um, and the, they were punishing. This is something they did initially and stopped doing uh, about midway through the time he was there. The Germans, if they caught someone caught people trying to escape, they would punish the whole group of people. The words collective punishment for escaping. And so they would randomly pick out members to, uh, to execute. And one man with a family got executed, was chosen for execution, and the saint, Maximilian Kolbe, volunteered to put himself in his place. And uh, Pilecki records what a, how the whole camp was stunned by this. He also mentions the bravery of certain priests uh, who help him in the camp. Um, Pilecki was uh, again, a traditional Polish officer, a patriot. Uh, there's a, a phrase in Polish uh, which describes traditional values, God on our country. This was basically his creed. Uh, according to Norman Davies, he did this, did this amazing thing, essentially out of uh, patriotic, a sense of patriotic and religious duty. And so he mentions the priest too, among other things, for example, smuggled hosts into the uh, camp so that they could, you know, have mass and everything, and mentions the, the uh, priest who uh, acted as chaplain to the Polish prisoners in the, um, in the concentration camp. Eventually, Pilecki escaped uh, from Auschwitz in April 1943. Um, after about three, uh, three and a half months, uh, he's taken by the Home Army, um, returns to Warsaw, and then not having done that, having volunteered for three years in the Auschwitz death camp, he goes back in 1944 and participates in the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. If you don't know, this was the uprising of the Warsaw Ghetto, of the Jews who tried to, they knew they were going to be exterminated by the Nazis. They uh, rallied and uh, had an uprising against the, um, against the, uh, the Nazis. And Pilecki, again, fought with extreme bravery in this final sort of battle uh, against the Nazis, uh, in which he held part of the city uh, for several days, uh, more or less by himself, in, a, um, in an astonishing sort of, again, act of heroism. Eventually, again, he's taken prisoner by the Germans, uh, after which he is uh, released and joins the, joins the Polish uh, Second Corps in Italy. And... It's from there that, um, in 1945, uh, after the war is over, he undertakes one last mission in 1940, uh, 1945. Uh, and that's there, actually in Italy in 1945 where he writes his, his report that's been published on Auschwitz. Uh, but he again volunteered to go back to Warsaw, because if you don't know, Warsaw, Poland, was actually conquered by the Soviets after World War II. Uh, and so he volunteered to go back to Warsaw to gather intelligence on the newly established Polish Communist government. And so um, it's there he's actually captured in 1947 by Communist Polish authorities, uh, accused of spying and planning to assassinate key figures in the Polish police. Uh, he was tortured uh, and then put on, uh, put on trial, show trial in 1948. You can Google this. There are images of him in his trial, which was a show trial, of course. And he was subsequently found guilty uh, and executed on the 25th of May, 1948, uh, with a shot to the back of the head. And so his report was never published 
during his lifetime or for the next 40 years because, of course, um, it remained under lock and key in the Soviet Union with the fall of the Soviet Union in 1990 and 1991. Eventually, this work comes from uh, comes out of obscurity. And as I said before, it only gets published, it gets published in Poland in the 1990s. It's only been published in English, um, again, I think it's 2012. Um, the book I mentioned before, The Auschwitz Volunteer Beyond Bravery, is what it's titled, um, gives you the full story of this amazing life and this amazing man who, again, for, um, as far as historians can tell, for those basic virtues, God, honor, country, uh, dare to do what, um, you know, I, this is one of the bravest things I've ever heard of. In fact, the historian of the Holocaust, uh, Timothy Snyder, said of his, you know, three years, nearly three years in Auschwitz to collect information, may have been the bravest thing anyone has ever done. And then to go back, of course, and fight in the Warsaw Uprising, to go back to Poland when they're under the boot heel of a, an equally despicable, monstrosity uh, in the uh, in Soviet communism and volunteer his life this way I can't think of any better better exemplar of what a, a Catholic life should look like and I say this if you read a chance again you should read the book uh, read his report it's pretty amazing he never uh, it's not a terribly it's a terse document because when he talks about the camp he he's supposed to give information Occasionally, he'll, he'll break out and reflect on things because what he's seeing is horrible and he's having to deal with it. And he's clearly, you know, uh, uh, you know he's motivated by his Catholic faith, but the, the report itself even goes beyond that. It's almost it is kind of for all humanity at the same time, even though he's a Catholic and Polish hero. And so someone you should learn, know, learn more about, celebrate his life. It's a, a life filled with tragedy, but also hope and... Uh, the faith in God and in Jesus Christ and in humanity that you can stand up to and at least have some sort of effect opposing evil in this world. So that is Catholic Lives uh, for this episode. Captain Vitol Pilecki, remember him uh, uh, next time you think about uh, Auschwitz. And uh, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, please uh, subscribe, uh, like. We're available, I think, on 10 different platforms now. Uh, Catholic uh, uh, Controversies in Church History is our uh, big overall podcast. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, uh, comments, please go to our Facebook page. I have a website. You can leave comments, send me an email, any suggestions, anything. Love to hear from you. Thank you guys for listening. Take care, uh, and God bless.